Selection of technical factors for radiographic imaging is an area of struggle for a lot of folks, both students and also technologists. Um, and so we here at the Medical Radiography Department at Baptist College have put together this short uh, video just to discuss technical factors, why they're significant, and to just kind of break down uh, the variables that can impact image quality. So here's some objectives. Um, we'll just be working towards an understanding of how various technical factors affect radiographic quality. And I'm going to differentiate between technical and geometrical factors. Um, even though the ARRT doesn't necessarily, I'll, I'll kind of talk about why that's significant. And then hopefully we'll be able to articulate when slash what changes in factors may improve radiographic quality. And this is impactful both uh, as we're looking at images um, in the classroom as well as out in the clinical site determining is this a good image, is it not a good image, why is it not good, is it a technical factor, is it positioning. So here are the uh, ARRT content specs um, and these are the ones implemented uh, 2014. They're the ones currently posted uh, on the website and I know these may be changing um, and I know for example like this section heading is going away um, but this is what's currently on their website. Um, the, the main takeaway here is I, I don't think this material here is not going to change regardless of how they may change the registry in the upcoming years. Um, the, the, the content knowledge here is going to be the same. And I, I think this chart is helpful um, because it does a, a nice little thing in that it differentiates between what I would call technical over here, technical, and then over here I would call these geometric factors. And the main resol the main distinction between them has to do with spatial resolution distortion, right? As we look down these columns here, we see primarily these these factors uh, that are technical, that are, I'm, I'm sorry, geometrical in nature, having to do with distances, um, perhaps patient motion uh, or uh, anode heal effect is clearly geometrical. Of course, there's always going to be exceptions to the rules, and probably the number one exception is patient factors. We see those going across the board having an impact on image quality. Um, another outlier is we'll talk about air gap, um, how that is related to both uh, um, geometrical as well as certain technical considerations of, of imaging. Um, this is an exercise that I've just kind of um, worked with some of my colleagues to to consider um, and I think it's helpful for us to just kind of walk through these boxes. Um, bear in mind with the stylus I, I kind of my handwriting may be a little sloppy but I'll just kind of be indicating across the board what each one of these um, what each one of these factors can do in terms of image quality and as we're considering these it's helpful to often when the ART frames these kind of questions they're going to be asking whether these exposure factors are influencing uh, the image, you know, are they increasing density, decreasing, those kinds of things. So, but in this case, we're being asked across the board, uh, as we increase uh, technical factors, exposure factors, um, what is happening to these various uh, technical factors down through the table. So, uh, it's just as we approach these kinds of questions in the clinical setting and, and on registry tests, it's, it's helpful to just know to make sure, first of all, do I understand what it's asking me? And in this case, it's asking me if it's increased. Um, so, as mass increases, is this a direct or indirect? It is a direct relationship um, with receptor exposure. Um, and so, in, in this case, being a direct uh, expo uh, relationship, the receptor exposure will increase. Okay? I could indicate that with an arrow, I guess. Um, now, what are the relationship with contrast and mass? It, there's not really a relationship between mass and contrast. All right, now uh, SID. Now, going back to, is this a technical factor or a geometrical factor? Um, well, some might say it's both, uh, but it is primarily a, a geometrical factor. But it does have an impact on receptor exposure through the inverse square law. And the inverse square law, of course, is an indirect uh, interaction. Um, and so as SID increases, we will see a decrease in receptor exposure. Okay? And does it relate to contrast? Mm, not really. Not really. KVP. Uh, this is a major technical factor here. So this is... Uh, 
well within the technical bounds of, of what we're considering. It has a direct exposure, a direct relationship um, to receptor exposure, and so as KVP increases, we would expect to see the receptor exposure increase. And interestingly enough, it also has a relationship to contrast. Um, that as KVP um, increases, we know the image contrast decreases. So we're going to call that an indirect uh, relationship with with contrast. And so as KVP um, increases, we would expect contrast to decrease. And this is uh, perhaps most evident on a chest x-ray examination, like an AP chest x-ray. Um, we use a high KVP on that image because it is a high subject contrast of uh, bit of anatomy, and we want to decrease that on image contrast. So we're going to increase the KVP, in essence, to decrease image contrast. Grids are another interesting uh, thing to consider. As our grid factor increases, we would expect to see a decrease in receptor exposure, so we're going to call that an indirect uh, relationship, indirect relationship between grids. As, as grids increase, our receptor exposure will decrease. decrease. Um, but interestingly enough, the, they have a direct relationship with uh, with the contrast, so as grid factors increase, the receptor the contrast will also increase. So it's almost the uh, opposite of, of KVP. Beam filtration. Um, primarily, the primary reason that we filter the beam in X-ray is to is to decrease um, patient skin dose, and so it's it's removing uh, low energy photons from the primary beam. Uh, photons that would not necessarily uh, be able to uh, darken the image receptor, and so they're essentially not useful. Um, and so, as we but as we increase the filtration, essentially what we're doing is we're hardening the beam. So we're we're having a higher number of higher high energy photons, but we're also having less of them. Um, so. Uh, I say all that to say beam filtration can make things a little bit tricky, um, but I'm going to just think purely about receptor exposure as I increase filtration. And to clarify, I'm speaking specifically about inherent filtration of the primary beam. So, in terms of its relationship to receptor exposure, it has an indirect relationship with receptor exposure, so as I increase beam filtration, inherent filtration, I would expect the receptor exposure to decrease. But much like KVP, it also has an indirect relationship with contrast. So as I increase beam filtration, I would expect the beam to get harder and harder and harder, and so I would decrease image contrast. Subject density is an off, is often a very complex uh, subject, too, because we could be talking about patient thickness or uh, tissue mass density, but in this case it just says subject density, so I'm just going to think purely about that. And uh, as I think purely about, as I increase my patient size or the density of the molecules within like a volume of, of, of material, I would expect that to have an indirect relationship, so as I increase the, that uh, density, I would expect to see a decrease in receptor exposure. And in terms of relationship to, uh, to contrast, I would also call that an indirect relationship because of Compton scatter. So as I increase the subject density, I would see a decrease of contrast due to uh, scattering and fogging of the image receptor. Uh, additive diseases, and these of course are going to have um, an, an indirect relationship. So as we increase uh, additive pathology, um, we would see a, a, a decrease in receptor exposure. And uh, as, it's, as it relates to, to contrast, though, if we had an increase, for example, of fluid in the lung, we would see a, probably a direct relationship with contrast. So uh, I'm going to say direct relationship uh, between an additive pathology and an increase in contrast. Um, destructive disease, of course, is going to have a direct relationship as uh, destructive process increases, like, for example, um, uh, an osteolytic uh, lesion in the bone, we'll actually see a decrease in density in our image. Um, so de destructive diseases will increase image uh, darkening on the, on the image exposure. And in terms of contrast, hmm, uh, I'm going to again say that it's a direct relationship that as I increase um, that destructive process, I will see an increase in contrast between the destructive process and the non-destructive healthy tissue around it. Beam restriction. This is a really good one. It goes back to the question of subject density. Um, so as I increase my beam, beam restriction, I will be uh, decreasing the area that's exposed on the image. 
Um, so at the, I'm going to call this an indirect relationship. As I increase this, I'll decrease the area that's being exposed on the image receptor. But it has a direct relationship with contrast. So as I increase my... Um, my beam restriction, I will be increasing my image contrast because I'm reducing the amount of Compton scattering from the image volume. OID um, is again uh, best considered as a geometrical factor. It's the distance from the object being imaged to the image receptor. And so as I increase that distance from the object to the image receptor, I would ex expect to see really no change in uh, receptor exposure per se because it's geometrical factor. But because of air gap, as I mentioned before, we could see a relationship between this and contrast. So we use this technique sometimes to increase um, image contrast. So I'm going to say that it has a direct relationship, and as I increase that OID, I could potentially see a, an increase in contrast, and this will be largely due to, um, to reducing the amount of Compton scattering photons that are reaching the image receptor. Like, for example, in a lateral... Uh, C-spine. This is often utilized to, uh, to get rid of Compton scatter and fog resulting from the patient's uh, shoulder uh, tissue so that it's to better image the space between C7 and T1. Focal spot size is, again, a best thought of as a geometrical factor. So it really has no relationship to, uh, to density. Um, I could increase or decrease, like say I had the, same, the exact same mass and I changed my focal spot size. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to get the exact same mass exposure, or I should if the machine is appropriately calibrated. And it doesn't have an effect on contrast either. It's just null across the board. It is a geometrical factor. So we'll, we'll come back to all these geometrical factors in a minute. Patient motion. Now, um, patient motion, uh, again, is best thought of, I think, of as a geometric factor affecting um, uh, d the amount of detail and spatial resolution on the image. Angle, again, geometrical factor. So we're starting to see uh, the impact of these, um, the, the making the distinction between a uh, a technical factor and a geometrical factor as we're making these considerations. Now I'm going to directly tie uh, the subject density back to patient size. So if I'm just, I'm going to increase the size of my patient now, just their body habitus. Um, I would expect to see that to have an indirect relationship with my receptor exposure, right? And just like image contrast, I would expect an increase in patient size to also decrease my contrast because of the scatter that's being produced by that larger body habitus. Um, anode heel effect, again, purely geometrical factor. So just maybe put in here as a distractor for us. So here's that other way of thinking about things as they relate to spatial resolution, distortion, things like that. So this is purely geometrical considerations. Um, we've, we've, we've been able to isolate these uh, factors as, as not so much pertaining to technical um, qualities as they do to geometrical qualities. So, but, it, but SID, I guess, again, there's always the outlier. There's always the exception of the rule, and SID and OID are kind of those exceptions. But... So let's think about SID and spatial resolution. They have a direct relationship. So as I increase my SID, I would expect my spatial resolution to increase. Um, does it have a relationship to distortion? Yes, actually, SID does. As we increase our SID, um, we, would ex we would expect distortion to decrease, at least distortion from magnification factor. So I'm going to say it's an indirect relationship to distortion. Shape distortion will decrease when I increase my SID because I will have things less uh, magnified. And size distortion will also decrease. OID, spatial res relationship with spatial resolution. Um, as we mentioned before, it can help us uh, increase our image contrast, but it does this at the expense of spatial resolution. So as OID, so it's a kind of a balancing act anytime we use an air gap technique, but anytime I increase my OID, I would expect to see a decrease in my spatial resolution and it, because I'm in essence distorting the image, I'm actually uh, creating a magnification in the image. So it has a direct relationship with distortion. I would expect to see um, not so much shape distortion as uh, size distortion. I'm going to increase the size. It will look like the same appropriate shape, but I'll increase its size. Focal spot size. Um, as I increase my focal spot size, um, I will be decreasing my spatial resolution. So they have an, it has an indirect effect. As I increase my focal spot size, I would expect to see a decrease in spatial resolution.
And why is that? Well, because it has a direct relationship to distortion. Um, I'm actually creating distortion from that point source of radiation. So f an increase in, in, focal, in focal spot size has a direct relationship to an increase in distortion. And I would call that uh, both possibly shape distortion as well as size distortion. Now, it, it does bear mentioning that perhaps some of these questions are debatable and so as we think about focal spot size I would also be willing to entertain a discussion in which we say that focal spots focal spot size does not actually create a perceptible change in uh, shape distortion or size distortion um, at least I'm not capable of really making those measurements with my eye um, do we know geometrically that it occurs yeah definitely it's something that we can graph out there but is it visible not so much so we're gonna need to be aware that as we kind of get deeper into this material there's a lot of different things that contribute to these things and it's important to very 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 carefully read what the questions asking um, and so it, it, it is acceptable to kind of say um, maybe you know or slash motion of course as we increase motion we will be decreasing our spatial resolution so it has a, it has an indirect effect uh, on our spatial resolution and of course, most any time we have something that has an indirect effect on, on uh, spatial resolution, it'll probably have a direct effect on distortion. Let me get my direct effect on, a, on distortion. So as I increase my motion, I'll see an increase in both shape and possibly size distortion, depending on how the patient's moving and whether it's an involuntary or voluntary motion. Like involuntary would be something like uh, um, gastric movement uh, during an exposure of a KB, KUB uh, x-ray versus a voluntary motion being like a patient refusing to hold their breath or not knowing how to hold their breath. Um, angulation, so an increase in angulation between the central ray and the image receptor plate is the way I'm reading this and I would expect to see that have an indirect relationship with, uh, with spatial resolution. So as I increase my angulation, I'm going to uh, decrease my spatial resolution, at least in those areas that are cast further and further away from the, the, the object of interest. So it is definitely distorting things. So as I increase uh, my angulation, I would expect to see an increase in both uh, size and shape distortion. And here are my references, and I really want to stress that I accessed this on this date, um, and these uh, content specifications are subject to change. Um, in fact, I know that they will be changing um, here in the next few months. Thank you.